Welcome to my office. One, understanding black or African American trauma is not a prerequisite for raising the king or queen at all. The fact of the matter is, is holding on to said traumas was stopping a lot of us from achieving our dreams. What trauma does is leave you in fear. And what fear does, it takes away your boldness and your confidence. And without those things, you can't achieve any dream that you have at all. It wasn't until I left Detroit and moved to the South and got a Caucasian wife that a lot of my dreams became reality. You see, fresh perspective can lead to so much insight because instead of seeing the trials in my way, she simply showed me what I needed to do for a clear path to victory. Like, I had every excuse to sit here and cry and complain and I'm being stereotyped and everything else, blah, blah, blah. I decided, fuck that shit. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get educated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the stereotype because I can't choose how people feel about me when they first meet me. The only thing I could do is prove the stereotypes wrong. And that's what I did. You know what I'm saying? I ended up going to school, got college education, ended up working for the feds, right? As a Muslim Arab speaker, right? Like go against the grain. And I proved the stereotypes wrong. And it, it is what it is. So it's your choice whether you're going to sit there and cry and say, the man is oppressing me. Yeah. Or you're going to go against the grain, destroy the stereotypes and become a better version of yourself. That's how I look at it. I don't have a victim mindset. Because I have every excuse to sit here and cry and say, I'm black and I'm Arab and they uh, institutional racism and all this other fuck shit. Nah, man. My parents came here. My dad got robbed plenty of times working as a cab driver in uh, New York City, etc. We got out the mud just like everybody else. It's just that we understood that we're in the number one country in the world when it comes to opportunity. And we're not going to fucking forfeit that opportunity to cry and say I'm a victim. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? You have a choice to make. You can either take the victim mindset and cry about your situation or improve. And I chose to improve, and I'm not going to see her and cry about it. Okay? That's the reality. Hi, guys. You know, when I listen to Myron from um, Fresh and Fit, you know, he's fit, say this, it, <laughs> it's so, it's so, it makes me feel a little sentimental about where I came from. In the sense that this is the kind of message that I would have heard from my father. That the world doesn't owe you a living like you have you have to depend on yourself to get things done and there's no one coming to help you and you have no one to blame but yourself for your failures and that type of mindset is the mindset that you can build a career on you can build a successful life on like and it's not guaranteed that like you could fail but you you brush off and you get up again and you go again at it and why is it that there's so much people who are third world you know third world guys who who came to North America, I'm in Canada, and they have this mindset of they're going to take on the world. And they don't, like, they experience racism, yeah. But when we look at it, we know that there's always a way out. And we always are looking for that way out. And I can tell you, personally, I would be lying if I said I experience racism because, I, you know, maybe it's Canada, I don't know, but I've never really experienced racism. But what I have experienced is is the fact that if you work hard and you are focused on what you need to do, you can succeed. And, you know, when I hear Myron say that, I'm so happy because I know he's much younger than I am. I'm in my mid-40s. But to hear someone speak like a man. And something I want a lot of ADUS guys to listen to, right? There is a victim mentality, a subculture of victim mentality that comes out that says, the reason I can't make it is because of white supremacy. The reason why I can't do this is because the white man is against me or the system is against me. I won't lie to you. That's sounding like a loser. Because the fact of the matter that you have black billionaires, you have black millionaires, it means there is a way. And, you know, one of the things uh, as immigrants, I can tell you what's the weird thing about an immigrant. An immigrant lives in a country like a third world country like Jamaica, where I came from. And you see poverty, not you see dire poverty. You see places where people don't have proper water to drink. You see places where children don't have money to go to school. You see a place where like right now, you know, you know, with with us having a lot of restrictions, what we're seeing now is some children have not been to school in maybe a year and a half and they don't have the electronic equipment to, to go to school. So they have missed a year and a half or 20 months of schooling. And when people see that, hey, you go to the first world, there is there is free or subsidized schooling, uh, you know, up to K to K through twelve, 
And once you have a, you, you graduate high school, there is so much opportunities out there for you. People wonder like, why are people not taking up these opportunities? But what it is, is there is a mindset that needs to be defeated. And that's why I keep putting this chart up and I'll continue to put it up. People who are not from, are not native, the, the, what do you, what do they call them? The diaspora actually out earn the people who are native. And so why is it that native blacks do not earn as much as, as immigrant blacks? And I said before, it's not because, you know, these immigrants are, are just so enterprising and all that. no. It's because they are red-pilled. They have seen dire poverty. They have seen... You see, people look at things in two different ways. And they need to look at it in this way. They have seen where a country is mismanaged. Completely mismanaged. That basic systems, basic functions, sewage, all that stuff does not work. So they understand that when they go to a country with sewage working internet availability you know there's a, a opportunity to get a job even at, even at a min, minimum wage when they see that they see opportunity and they go at it and sometimes yes they will exp- some of them may experience racism but that's not going to be deter them from trying to advance they're always going to be looking a way to advance themselves and that type of abominable spirit is what causes them to move into the middle class so quickly and it's something that I hope a lot of other people start to see because I can tell you, you know, you can sit in your in your different communities, diaspora communities. And when they sit stand in the diaspora communities, they feel proud of themselves because they have made it. And everyone talks about, oh, my son is going to college. My daughter just got accepted to this other school or whatever. And when they're there and they're doing that, you don't hear a defeated people. You hear a set of people that have figured out how to ma- ma- how to maneuver themselves in this system. And then when they see people who have been here for years not know how to maneuver themselves in the system, you know, sometimes they tend not to understand. I, th- I think I'm understanding why. Because there's a lot of groupthink. And, you know, one thing it is, I don't think a lot of immigrants move into the hood because they try to stay away from the hood because they understand that within the hood, there is a there is a, a group thing that tells people that you are less than you are a victim and that you can't make it and once you have that mindset you you are destined for failure so i when i hear guys like myron i am so proud of it but the problem is is that this would be you know he'd say this for 1 minute and a half and but it's in a 3 hour podcast and people don't hear it What people hear is girls being told to leave off the podcast and all that. But what they're not getting is that to be a man, you have to wake up and throw off the victim mindset. And you have to find a way. You have to find a legal, legitimate way. And sometimes it it means you move miles away. Sometimes, Because as I can tell you, I moved miles away to look for opportunity. So the world is your oyster, but it does not owe you a living. So wake up from the victim mindset and get out there and seize the day, carpe diem. And that what, what that means is you look for opportunities. You look to go back to school. You look to, you know, you know, do well at your job. You look to improve yourself. And it is you who needs to do it. No one else can. And you can't sit on a couch and do it. So the important thing and the important message is level up. Thanks.